now John Nutter. Um, he's a familiar face to us, um, but I'll give a brief introduction. John's a 1989 graduate of Port Angeles High School and has served in our community in a number of capacities over the last 30 years. After graduating with an MBA from Western Washington University, John returned to Port Angeles and spent many years as the finance director of Olympic Medical Center. He spent the next eight years as a police officer for the city of Port Angeles before joining the Port of Port Angeles where he currently serves as the deputy executive director. John also served on the OMC Board of Commissioners for the past 11 years. I just want to say thank you to John for his breadth and depth of experience in our community. It shines through in all of your roles. Please welcome John Nutter. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Um, I, I have to say, as I look around the screen at all the people here, um, I actually personally know the majority of the people here. And, and this is kind of like, like, like a walk down memory lane for me because you know, I see Steve Zenovic, who did the survey work for the very first house I built here in Port Angeles. And while I was living there, Tom Behrman became my neighbor. And while I was living there, I went to work for Marilyn Ring and worked with Norm. And while I was working at Marilyn Ring, I got to know Grant, who's now my neighbor where I live now. And then, you know, I was, then after Marilyn Ring, I moved to the Olympic Medical Center where I worked with Kathy. And I worked with Bill's wife, Marge. And, and, and just the, the, the timeline, as, as I look around the screen, the, the timeline <laughs> just keeps going. And so I, it, it's, it's wonderful to see all of you. And you know, today I'm, I, I work with Laurel on a regular basis. I see my boss, Karen is on, uh, glad she's here. Dan Shea, uh, who is a uh, stalwart here at the port is on. So very happy to see all of you. Um, it's, uh, I, I, I almost feel like I'm already a member here because I, I already know everyone. So um, am, I, am I gonna be able to share my screen, Brian? Were we able to get that unlocked? So John, what, what looks like is going on is we're using Rotary has provided this Zoom account for us, and they've got it locked so that only hosts can share a screen. And I didn't realize that because in the past we're using my personal Zoom account for our meetings, um, and so unfortunately I can't get it to let it, let you share your screen. Okay. Well, I had about twelve videos lined up to be able to show you guys about everything that we're doing at uh, at, at, the, at the port and. Um, uh, John Brewer, I think you've, you've sat through one of these before with another group, and you can attest to what, what a great show it is, but I'm, I'm just going to have to kind of change it up here a little bit. So um, this will probably be a little shorter and condensed since I uh, don't have the ability to show all the videos I was expecting to. So let me talk about just a few things we have going on here at the port. Um, and see if hey, I can. John. Hey, John. Yeah. Here's a stupid, uh, simple question, but could you take your camera and just point it at the screen? Um, yeah. That's a possibility, but I can't even get... Um, well, you can email my... Brian. It may be too late, but you can... Well, you what you can do is if you join the meeting on your cell phone, you can do that. Um, well, I, I might try this whole camera thing, because I do have a camera. Oh, your camera's loose. Yeah, you can point at the screen. Yeah. So give me just a second here, I'll move this around. John? <clears throat> now, now that you've had the nice tour of my office, <laughs> see if we can't... Um, Okay. Now this is a little awkward, but we're, we're going to make this work. Um, so um, I'll probably go through some of these uh, fairly, fairly quickly. Um, so one of the uh, one, one of the frequent topics you'll see in the newspaper, um, although it has been quiet for a while, is is what's the port doing with the John Wayne Marina and swim? Um, so what I'm showing here, at least I think I'm showing, because I can't see it since I'm behind the camera now, uh, is this, this is what Squim Bay Marina looked like before it was given to us, when it was uh, owned by John Wayne. Uh, Mr. Wayne and his family made a very generous donation of giving this land to the port under the condition that we made a marina out of it. And, and, and we were happy to do so. Um, so. Some would say it was a little bit selfish on his part because he loved having his boat in this area. and um, Okay, no. 
and, and this provided, you know, ability for him to have a marina to bring his own boat into. Um, we, we, we put a lot of money into the marina and kind of, you know, view, current day view here. Um, but, but as a municipal organization, we're really struggling right now of what are we going to do in the future here? Because it's, it's a, you know, it was built in the early 80s. And so it's, it's pushing, you know, 30, 40, 50 years old here. And once it hits that 50 year mark, a lot of that infrastructure is going to have to be replaced. New docks, new pilings, repair to the breakwater, upgrade, you know, repave the parking lots and the list goes on. And, and there's a, anywhere from a 35 to a $50 million price tag associated with that. And, and so as a port, we're, we're struggling with that. Is, is that the best use of, uh, of you know, $50 million of public money to, to create a marina used by a limited number of people? So we, you, you've seen newspaper articles. Um, we, and, and you'll probably see more before this is all undone. Our, our commission's just really trying, struggling with, you know, do we continue ownership or do we look for uh, someone else that could run this and potentially invest their dollars into keeping this facility going? Um, John, we can see everything. It's going well. Huh? Okay. Well, good. Um, uh, other stuff we do. Uh, here's the Port Angeles Marina. And uh, kind of the highlight of this video is the white fabric building. Brand, brand new facility we just put in here. And I'll try and turn the volume down here a little bit. So this is a brand new facility we just put in. We just added this new building and what you see happening inside of it here is, is work. You know, our, our goal in owning and operating the boatyard is to facilitate jobs down on the waterfront. And so as we looked around, we realized we needed more indoor space. Uh, so we just in the last year created this new building. Um, and so people can rent it on a daily basis to bring their boats in to do whether it's engine work or repainting work or whatever they need to do. Um, but so we, there, there, there's one example of something we're doing down at the, at the Port Angeles waterfront. Um, from there, I'm going to go a little bit farther down the uh, waterfront and I'm going to talk about really what's been the bread and butter of the port for, since 1923 when we uh, came into existence. Um, and that's really been facilitating the movement of timber uh, on and off the peninsula. And so this is, um, this is just some of our equipment and we're loading a barge as you can see here. So um, we're loading from what's called the coffer dam, um, which was put in place when the graving dock project came through. Uh, but it's been really helpful for us because we've been able to pull barges up to that and use it to, to both load and unload. So um, over the past uh, week here, we used that to uh, load out um, an entire barge that's headed to Southport, Oregon. And, and that's been a good partnership. It, it, we just provide the facility, but companies will uh, import and export uh, timber out of here. So uh, Port, Port Townsend Paper and PA Hardwoods uh, need more uh, hardwoods you know, like alder. And so that barge brought a whole bunch up. And then we loaded up with a whole bunch of saw logs that headed down to that mill down in Southport, Oregon. Um, so this is, th this is a good example of what we do as an organization, is we facilitate business in the community. These aren't our logs, we don't own them. Um, they're, they're coming from various companies, um, both coming in, coming out, and they may go, be going down to Oregon, they may be going into Puget Sound, they may be headed up to Canada. Um, whole, whole, whole lot of different destinations. Kind of a similar situation. Uh, no, that's the same one. Sorry. John, yeah. are all of these activities, the new building and, and this coffer dam, are they all self supporting? Um, yes, they, they, they are. This is, if, if you look at the finances of the port, it is our handling of. Of, of wood products, whether it's wood chips or logs, whether it's here in our log yard or down at our marine terminal, you know, that's, that's what pays for everything else we do. Because I can tell you running airports, does, we, we're not making any money running the airport. Now the airport is absolutely critical to our community. Even when, even when we don't have commercial service, um, it's still critical that we keep the airport going. Hopefully, and you know, we'll get airport or get commercial service again. But I can tell you, we lose nearly a million dollars a year operating that airport. By the time we pay for the capital and the operating costs, it, it, it's a money loser. I can tell you, we don't really make any money running marinas either. Um, 
we, we could jack our rates up, but then we start losing tenants and that, that just becomes, you know, a, a, a no go. So um, t timber is timber is what built the port and we're trying to diversify and I'll, I'll get into the a little bit of that um, later in my presentation. Um, but this is really from the from the uh, from the early 20s. Um, th th this is what made the port what it is today um, and, and built all the infrastructure we have. Hey, John. Here's something. It, it's not new. Uh, wood chips have been loaded out of the Port Angeles port um, for, for many years, although it went away for a little while, but it's something that's really come back recently. So we've started um, loading wood chips uh, that, that are created by Interfor um, and a little bit from PA or uh, from uh, PA Hardwoods as well. And so we, we uh, they, they stockpile chips. Um, you, you'll see the uh, Big, so this, this is a big pile right next to Westport down on the waterfront and then we bring, well we, it, it's uh, other companies bring barges in and so uh, they use their conveyor system and they will load these huge barges um, you know, and they actually, they've been going up to mills in British Columbia uh, that need um, fiber source uh, to, to run their mills with and that, that's something that um, we've, we're doing 20 to 25 barges a year. Um, which is something that hasn't happened here in, in, in the last decade. Um, so uh, ha happy to see some of that business uh, coming. Another, another th this was one of the very first ones we did, um, was not just a barge, but actually an entire ship. Uh, so yeah, first ship vessel to call on the port in almost 18 years. And so as, as the port, why do we get excited about things like this? Because this is a lot of jobs in our community and across the peninsula. You know, for all, for all the wood chips you see there, that means that, you know, tra if you trace that backwards, you have people, you know, loggers out in the woods, you have timber fallers, you have, you know, managers of timber lands, you have truckers, you have fuel distributors that sell fuel to trucks. You, and just there's a huge economic impact um, from, from a natural resource uh, ba based job like this. And so uh, we're, we're very pleased to be able to provide our facilities to facilitate um, jobs like this. And, um, uh, th this, this particular boat took several days to load, um, but uh, I, I wouldn't even want to hazard this, you know, you could directly tie dozens and dozens of jobs just to loading this ship alone, um, if, if you trace the whole supply chain backwards. Um, so we're, as an organization dedicated to economic development, um, this is why you see us doing a lot of the things we do um, to, to create jobs in our community. Um, we also run a marine terminal. Um, this is what we refer to as Terminal One. and um, Coming into Terminal One here, this is the Cable Innovator. Um, they, they become a regular uh, visitor for us, although as of a week ago, it's now bright red. They just went into dry dock for a while and came back. Uh, th this is one of the ships that supports uh, fiber optic cable connections between North America and Europe um, and Japan. So if let, let's say something happens to a fiber optic cable that's going across, it could be up in Alaska or coming out of San Diego, a uh, trans-Pacific cable. Um, they actually go in and they fish it up off the, off the ocean floor and uh, reconnect it. And um, we are their favorite home port. When they're not out doing a job, they like being here because we give them Wi-Fi and we have a uh, shore connection so they don't have to run their diesel generators. Um, they're they're really happy about being able to stay here as kind of their home port when they're when they're not out doing a job. Um, here here here's another another example of uh, this was for Westport. Uh, Westport had a hole mold that they wanted to move to another location. And so we were able to use our marine terminal and they rented some cranes and they're able to actually take that. So that's that's the bottom of one of their big super yachts. And they were able to you know use our facility to load that on to move it to go build another boat um, down in Westport. Um, just an example of you know, using our facilities. Um, Another example here of, of really what's been the bread and butter for, for, for decades for the port, using our facilities to support the movement of, of logs. And so here's lo loading of a log ship and 
you know, with everyone on the call, Norm, I don't know if this was an m &R ship or Grant, this might have been one of yours as well. I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but um, it, just an example of using our facilities to create jobs in the community and, and to facilitate commerce in, in, in the community. Um, another one of our key um, items is, is topside repair on Terminal 1. So not only do we provide berthing for the cable invader, which is there on the left, uh, here's an example of Platypus Marine is working on this Navy barge. Um, you know, Platypus gets quite a few government contracts to do retrofit work um, and, and, and do work, whether it could, could be uh, government, it could be commercial fishing, it could be recreational. And actually in that very spot where this barge is, as of a couple of days ago, I don't know if any of you have seen it yet, we have two of the biggest, most expensive super yachts in the world that are gonna be here for the next couple months. Um, these are um, very expensive, very, very well respected super yachts. One of them is only two years old. It's about a $250 million yacht. Uh, <laughs> belongs to a gentleman that um, bought the MMA, the mixed martial arts, UFC, uh, he, he, he bought it for four, bought it for, excuse me, bought it for 2 million and about 15 years later sold it for 4 billion. So pretty good rate of return when you turn, you know, 4 million or 2 million into 4 billion. And so he can, uh, he can, he can do things like uh, buy really expensive boats. So, but that's bringing jobs to our community now. Um, another recent investment we've made um, is a washdown pad, which, which you see down at the bottom here. So whether it's Westport or Platypus Marine, whenever they bring a boat out of the water, one of the first things they have to do is, is pressure wash the hull. And so uh, we, we invested nearly $2 million in a washdown facility that is able to, you know, from an environmentally responsible perspective, they can wash everything down. It goes into special containment vaults that are underneath that slab. And then we actually have an on-site water treatment program um, that's able to, to uh, filter and clean the water before it gets discharged into the uh, sanitary sewer system for the city. Um, so this is, again, investing in jobs for our community. Um, this is on the edge of 18 acres of the former K-Ply mill site uh, that we're, we're looking to turn into a marine trades industrial park, uh, which you can see some of it in the background here. But if you're gonna if you're gonna have multiple companies working on big boats, the very first thing all of them are gonna need is the ability to wash the boat down. And so that's, that's why we're investing in some of just the base infrastructure is, is to have that that in place. So if I'm, you know, boat builder XYZ, and whether I'm coming from, um, could, could be coming out of Lake Union and just getting squeezed out of space there, or maybe I'm coming from Shreveport, Louisiana, um, we're trying to put together a package to encourage people like that to, um, to come, come invest here. So, um, here, kind of a, here, here's kind of a big picture. This is really, when, when you look at the port strategic plan, this is our number one item. Um, as you've heard me talk about earlier in the presentation, you know, we're, we've been very heavily wood dependent and, and we will forever support wood products here on the peninsula because of all the jobs that's created by them. But we also realize that we need to diversify our income stream, not only for us to just survive financially as a port, but for our community as well. Um, we, we need good family wage paying jobs in our community. So, so this is the old K-Ply uh, mill site and we, we spend our own money to do all the environmental remediation to clean all of this up. And then we sued the various insurance companies, whether it was our company or our insurance that you know, was insuring us, or it was the companies that had operated there over many, many years, long before K-Ply. Um, and we were actually able to get all of our money back. So we were able to uh, re remediate and clean this entire site. So we now have 18 acres. And to the best of my knowledge, this is the only 18 acre site of undeveloped land on Puget Sound right now. So th this is one of our conceptual drawings, you know, down here in kind of the bottom right hand corner, this would, you know, potentially be a large boat manufacturing company. Up here along the waterfront, we have just some work pads that would be, you know, available to lease on a monthly or a yearly basis where companies could pull boats out and put them there. Um, we have room up here for some smaller facilities, um, more, more wash pads here on the left. Down here in the bottom, what says number three, we've actually, we've already made that step. That is the Aero Marine Group. And uh, Aero Marine uh, does launch services and boat repair work um, across Puget Sound, everywhere from here to part of Seattle, part of Tacoma, part of Anacortes, Bellingham, 
uh, here quite a bit. Uh, Jack and Terry Harmon are just, you know, they've been, they've been facilitating work on the Port Angeles waterfront since 1989. And so they've moved their corporate headquarters into this building here and we're working with them. And one of them labeled four here, we're probably gonna be building one of those for them as well. Uh, so they can do work on their own boats as well as work on other uh, boats that they uh, get contracted to work on. So th th we're putting a lot of time and effort into this um, because one, hopefully we can make a little bit of money leasing the space out and two, and even, which is even more important is uh, this creates family wage jobs. Um, with our particular focus on economic development, um, you know, I, I frequently hear of, man, you, you should get rid of that log yard and you should put a Starbucks down there because, you know, it'd look a lot nicer to have a Starbucks instead of a log yard. <laughs> well, yes, it would look nicer, but I can tell you Starbucks employees generally don't have full-time hours and they're making minimum wage. And, and that's not a family supporting, that's not a family wage job. Your, your typical marine trades job is more in the $70,000 a year range. And those, those are the kind of jobs we're really trying to facilitate and, and bring to town, uh, things that are gonna help our community and, 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 and have a lot more impact than, um, than the hospitality jobs. I, we're, we're not against tourism. You know, if, if we can fill up hotels, that, that's great to have those jobs. We have nothing against hospitality, but unfortunately, hospitality doesn't pay very well. So that's why when you hear things about the port, that's why you'll hear us talking about things more, more like this. Um, nope, that's broadband, you, you guys aren't interested in that. So I've kind of just given you a quick overview of, of you know, who we are and if I can, uh, I've already done that, figure out how to get my Zoom back up. It's not working. Brian, do you have the ability to force me to unshare my screen? Oh, here we go, Pro probably right here. Uh, stop share. There we go. So in terms of, you know, in, in, the, in the age of coronavirus, we're really not doing a whole lot different. You know, we, for, for the last 90 some years, um, our role has been facilitating commerce and facilitating jobs, using our assets uh, to, to help other local businesses uh, do their business, which is employing people and creating economic development in our community. Yeah, coronavirus, coronavirus came along and that had a huge impact in our community, but we've really focused on trying to keep our operations going, um, whether it is keeping our marine terminals operating so that Platypus Marine and Westport can continue to do what they're doing, uh, to keeping our both of our marinas, the John Wayne Marina and the Port Angeles Boat Haven. I can tell you they've seen record business uh, towards the end of this last summer. Uh, people have figured out that boating is the ultimate social distance activity. And so, um, you know, I, I can tell you in the month of July, boat sales in the state of Washington were up 40% over the previous year. People are going boating like crazy. Um, my, uh, my better half works for First Federal and uh, listening in on some of their executive calls. The two areas where lending is just off the chart for banks, for many banks, not just First Federal, is RV and boat loans. People are buying RVs, people are going boating. And so, you know, we, we've kept our marinas going, which is a challenge when you got COVID and the whole disinfectant and keeping bathrooms clean. And um, that's a challenge, but you know, it's a commitment we've made to our community to, to keep those things going. Um, obviously we continue to promote uh, commerce up at our airport. Um, we, we, we haven't had commercial air service for over five years here. Um, that, that's also in our strategic plan of trying to figure out how do we get commercial air service? We, we have, comp we have comp or conversation started with a couple small operators. Um, I wouldn't call either of them promising yet, but, but both of them have potential. And, and we're seeing this other third dynamic starting to creep in the picture, which is the, the rapidly expanding development of electric aircraft. Um, company over in Moses Lake has uh, already done their first few test flights of a Cessna Grand Caravan, you know, like a 10 passenger that is fully electric. And it is perfect for something like Port Angeles to Seattle because it's a short flight where you can plug in on each end and it does amazing things. You know, a, a typical fuel bill to go from Port Angeles to SeaTac would have been in the four to $600 range, just the fuel bill for that trip alone. They can do the same thing with electric aircraft for about $7 worth of electricity. That, that's a game changer that it all of a sudden, you know, it, it, it all comes down to the almighty dollar. You know, we, we, we could have air service now if we had a lot of people willing to pay $250 per seat to get between here and Seattle, but there's just not the market demand with that. But if they're able to take, if they're able to reduce their cost where tickets are 90, $89 or $79, 
I think the demand is going to be there. And so I, I think, I think that's how we're going to see success in the future with our airport here. So um, whether it's that supporting our airport out in CQ, uh, which, um, you know, supports the fishing community out, of the lot, out there. A lot of people flying into Olson's resort to go f uh, fishing out there. Um, we're just doing all we can to, to support the businesses in our, in our area. Um, so everything from that to working with our, we have a state and a federal um, lobbyist that we work with on a number of issues trying to support uh, the, the coho. Um, there's no silver bullet for that. A lot of you are on when we were talking about that before the meeting, um, but we're doing everything I, we can to work with, you know, Senator Cantwell, Senator Murray, Congressman Kilmer of, of how, what can we do to help save the coho? Um, so with that, I've, I've rambled on at you guys for quite a while here and I'd, I'd be happy to open up to questions and Karen or uh, Dan Shea, if you guys want to jump in and add something as well, please do. I have a question, John. Uh, could you talk about the um, viability of uh, commercial barging uh, uh, in, in, the, in the port uh, other than log barging? So that, that's something we're spending quite a bit of time looking at right now. Um, we, we have a, I don't, I don't call it a natural disadvantage. We have, we have a significant disadvantage out here on the peninsula that we, in that we don't have rail. Um, when, when you look at a lot of manufacturing sites, uh, what Seattle area or down along the I-5 corridor, the, the major advantage they have over us is they have rail service. And, and that is by far the cheapest way to move just about anything. And so we're looking at what would it take to get a, you know, a container barge facility, something that's uh, e either a roll on roll off where you're actually able to drive into it and drive back out and load stuff or, or to load containers. Um, you know, we, we, we know that there's, I think it's about a dozen containers a day just leaving our landfill alone uh, that they're paying to truck um, from here to Tacoma. Um, the, the, the other, other big piece of this is um, McKinley Paper is starting up and they're 100% dependent on trucking um, and to, you know, McKinley Paper alone, they're going to have over 100 trucks a day going through downtown Port Angeles. That, that's that's a lot of truck traffic and they, and they are very dependent that they mean they, they become you know at the mercy of the hood canal bridge to get their feed stock into the mill and then to get their finished product back to the i5 corridor uh, they're going to be doing con uh, corrugated container board um, I don't know for sure but I suspect they're going to very quickly become a major supplier for Amazon because that's exactly what they're going to be making is all those box materials and and so the ability to, you know for them to have a second transportation mode of barging that is cheaper and then a backup for trucks um, I, I think is going to become critical over the next few years so we don't have, have, a, have a plan put together yet but we are having those conversations because uh, I think that's something our our community needs whether it's supporting McKinley doing taking care of ourselves like with our municipal uh, waste or, or attracting other businesses you know, we, we, have, we have a lot of space up at our airport industrial park. And when I talk to potential tenants and, and manufacturing is one of the, you know, one of the businesses we'd love to attract into our industrial park, shipping becomes a major issue. So we, I, we need to diversify there a little bit more, which uh, easy, easy problem to identify, not so easy to pay for because it's a multi, multi-million dollar investment. And, and at the moment we're, we, we've decided our, our best bet in the short term is the Marine Trades Industrial Park. Um, that, that's where we can get, we think, the best bang for our buck in term of, terms of creating jobs for our community. But barging is, is right behind that. John, for the Marine Trades Industrial Park, what's, what's the timeline? What's, what's, uh, when do we? Well, um, I, I hope to have a, a clearer timeline known here in a couple of weeks because we have an application in for an EDA grant to do all of the site development, which means all of the trenching for water, power, electricity, data, roads, curbs, you know, the, 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 all, the, all the base infrastructure. And we're supposed to hear in the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, that's about an $8 million grant. Uh, that would really kickstart that project, and you know, we, we we could have construction underway a year from right now um, if oh, wow. things great, go the great. way the way the way I think they are. So it's been a long haul just to to go from a contaminated mill site to a clean site. I mean, we what we were able to accomplish at the, at the mill site, Washington State Department of Ecology still shakes their head. They they've never seen. A cleanup done that fast. You know, we got it done in a matter of six or seven years versus you can look at the Rainier Mill site that, you know, 
20, 30 years later, you know, they, they, they've barely even gotten started. So, um, it, it, and I got to give credit to the Port Commission several years ago before I was here. They identified the potential for that property and they said, you know what, we can spend years and decades fighting in court over who's going to pay for the cleanup, or we can just go get it done and fight in court afterwards as to who should reimburse who. And so as an organization, we stepped forward and just got it done. And then we went to court and, and got it paid for afterwards. If, if, if the court commission wouldn't have had that foresight, it'd still be sitting there today full of uh, chemicals and hydraulic oil and uh, everything else. So uh, very pleased with the way that came together. Well, John, we're, we're, uh, we're pretty much at the end of the meeting. So we want to thank you for joining us. It was a fantastic presentation. I learned a lot for sure. And uh, I was mentioning this earlier, but we, all, we also appreciate the port's uh, sponsorship for Gentlemen in the Park over the years. So it's uh, certainly been it. uh, Do we have any last questions of our members for John? Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I was um, wondering. Uh, so you had said uh, boat sales are up 40%. And you had also talked about boat builders briefly. Um, are we? Are you pushing to uh, encourage builders to relocate headquarters, their headquarters here? Absolutely. That's. Um, we're we're in conversations with a couple of different build, boat builders, and w whether you know the. If you're a boat builder and you're over on Lake Union, also you have employees who are now spending an hour and a half trying to drive to get there just to get to work because it's become so crowded and um, and a lot of boat builders are just getting squeezed out of the Lake Union area. Or we have other local and out of state boat builders that we're encouraging them saying, hey, you know, when, if, you, if, you, if you're looking to expand your operation, we have all this room. Um, you know, come, come talk to us. So that's jobs for Port Angeles and in the North London Peninsula. That's what we're focused on. It's great, great idea. Um, John, um, aquaculture, is that on the table, off the table? Um, any consideration going forward, possibly moving towards swim or anything like that? Um, so we, we don't, we, we, I'd say we have a minor supporting role in aquaculture. Um, we, we obviously support the Jamestown tribe and Jamestown is expanding very rapidly, both in Squim Bay and Discovery Bay. Um, they, they have oyster farms going in and they're going to be doing some other stuff. So a lot of their boats and the, they're called flupsies, the floating upwellers. They're like these big barges that generate the water and, and run it through the feedstock. Um, you know, we support them at the John Wayne Marina. Um, we lease space to cook aquaculture, and they, they've, they've been through the ringer recently. A lot of us have seen that in the paper. Um, they lost their net pen lease out here in Port Angeles Harbor, but now they're working with Jamestown as well to reinstall some, some new net pens, they hope, um, if they can get the lease from DNR. So we're, we're leasing um, storage space to them where they're storing all of their equipment up at the airport industrial park. And they also lease a business office from us down on the jetty right next to the Harbor Master's office um, down, down at Port Angeles. So um, yeah, we're, we're doing everything we can to support them. Now, the rest of their operation isn't up to us. It's not, you know, we, we don't manage the harbor. We, we manage the uplands, um, but we, we, we don't manage the harbor itself. That's actually under the uh, jurisdiction of either uh, DNR or the Coast Guard. Very good. And any other questions for John? Hey, John, real quick uh, on the, um, on John and Wayne Marina, I, I thought that Jamestown had their, um, had their hands in the, in the mix and are they 100% out? Or are they still involved in those conversations as far as acquiring? Uh, they, they they are involved in the in the conversation because they have a you know a a long interest in in what happens to the marina. But um, about a year ago, we actually went out. We put an RFP uh, out for proposals or quotes. You know who who would be interested in taking over, you know ownership or management uh, under a lease structure to to do something different with the marina. And they did not put a bid in. Um, they they looked around and said. You know, they, they feel confident that whatever the port does, and, and, and the answer may be we just continue to run it, but they, they feel comfortable that they, they are comfortable with the fact we will do whatever it takes to make sure they are able to continue their operations there. So they actually, they didn't throw their hat in the ring at all for, for management or ownership. Okay, well, thank you. John, thanks a million. That was uh, fantastic. We appreciate it. 
Well, I appreciate getting to see a lot of old friends here. Uh, good to see all of you and meet a few of a few new ones as well. And if, you, uh, if you'd like myself or Karen Goshen, our executive director, to ever come back, please let us know and we'd be happy to. Very well. Uh, so, so Norm, uh, yeah, so Norm, Norm's uh, committee will just stay on here and then uh, we appreciate everybody uh, joining our rotary meeting this morning. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.